Hello, Matilda. Thanks so much for, for joining me today. Um, I'm obviously re recording this as a video, but it is also going to go out on uh, my new podcast, the uh, Game of Loans podcast. Thanks so much for, for joining me. But we were starting to talk off air about the difficulties at the moment with the coronavirus and, uh, or as I called it yesterday, the call bin. <laughs> Um, also, and I caught you on it. <laughs> you corrected me, thank you, because it was it was also correct for my phone. So everywhere so far, I've been saying Corbin. I don't know who this Corbin person is, but he sounds very dangerous. Um, but but I must say, before I did correct you, I actually went and I googled it because I was like, yes. is there something I don't know about? <laughs> No, oh, I couldn't find anything. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> I tracked back though and I've put it so many places. So for, for whatever reason, at some point I've used the word Corbin and then <laughs> that has meant that it's also corrected on my phone. So everywhere I'm writing Corbin 19. So yeah, <laughs> just makes it look like a bit of Yeah, but yesterday it was a hectic day, I think, for absolutely crazy. everybody, absolutely uh, especially crazy. in our industry. So I, I don't blame you that you'd made a mistake and then you just went with it all the way through because you didn't even I didn't even know until until you came along and saved the day so thank you for that but um Matilda did you want to just for a quick two minutes just give us a bit of a um, an overview as to who you are what you do um and then we can go straight into talking about everyone's favorite subject at the moment sure um so <laughs> what I do so I am running my own letting agency estate agency I manage property since 2007 and then I also got my own property uh, portfolio. I also run a Brixton property block. So I'm a Brixton, I am a local property expert and I am a huge advocate and, and, and um, I speak about legislation for landlords because recently in the last couple of years, our, the, the law has changed massively so i keep on talking about it uh, and we met at few events as well where i when where you have been speaking and i've been speaking as well so this is what i mainly do yeah cool so like i suppose that let's just address the elephant in the room uh coronavirus from a lettings perspective because as you know the vast 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 majority of all my clients are all landlords in some way shape or form a lot of developers as well but mainly landlords so a lot of the listeners, I think, are going to be are going to be landlords too. What immediate effects are you seeing on on the letting side of, of the market, um, whether it be through um, sort of these rental holidays that we've been discussing, um, or, or anything else? What what's been going on in your business in the last few days? So total madness, absolute madness. So first thing, um, we've we had few um, withdrawals. So basically, people decided that they are not going ahead with tenancies due to coronavirus. They are not sure if they will be stable with jobs, if they will be able to afford anymore. So we we had two withdrawals uh, until yesterday. We had one today, so three all in total at the moment. People are panicking a little bit. I am not blaming, I am, not, I am really not blaming them. Then landlords are panicking as well, calling, saying that due to the whole situation which um, about the, the rental ho uh, payment, uh, holidays, um, they, they are considering to actually leave the property empty instead of letting the property and, have, and, and take a risk not, not getting the rent. So everybody is panicking. In terms of viewings, we had a lot of cancellations as well because people have been panicking. But this was like until about yesterday, then today we, like it's still happening, but what I think it's the most important at the moment is not to panic. So we put coronavirus protocol in, uh, in, in our agency, so basically, we do work from home. Most of our staff is working from home. As you can see, I am working from home as well. Lovely um, colour scheme, by the way. I'm, I'm like <laughs> the blue in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's recently redecorated. So I still need to do a few bits and pieces, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, like, um, property management is working from home. We've got one. Uh, we've got one negotiator who is on call, so he's basically in the office and he's going and doing viewings. We, I, I had to introduce. Uh, protocol for viewings because um, 
he needs to ask questions, people who get in touch, if they've been recently in any other countries within the last 14 days, have they been in touch with, with, with anybody who had coronavirus? So all of this had to be put in place. Also the same question had to go to, to, uh, proper, to tenants who um, occupy property and we are viewing those properties. So basically we need to make sure that everybody is safe, that when viewers come for the viewing, they are safe, we are not going to a property which with a tenant who is self-isolating or tenant who has been uh, in, 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 in the countries that he shouldn't and he's been traveling and in touch with, with, with um, infected people. So it's, it's quite a lot of work and <laughs> um, that we have to have to do with it, but, um, but it's, it's important not to, not to panic. Second thing, yesterday was the, the biggest uh, madness because um, we received um, a message that um, rent guarantees most likely will not be offered from insurance companies anymore. And that was absolutely like, the, this, this was hectic and shocking. So me as a business owner, as a owner of the, of the agency, I made kind of drastic decision so I basically make a decision on behalf of my landlords on all of my managed portfolio that I am going ahead with the offer, with, with, the, with the insurance. So I basically, without my landlord's consent, I send them a letter, opt-out letter, um, that I, I am making this decision because it's a critical decision. We don't know what's going to happen, so I'm putting you on the, on the rent guarantee um, scheme. You've got 14 days to let me, to a cooling period, to let me know if you don't want it. But if we... We had to do it yesterday because we had a deadline. If I didn't put them on that on that um, uh, rent guarantee scheme, we don't know if that will uh, work from today. If any people who will start today, they will be still getting rent guarantee policies. Okay. So it's it's been just just absolutely hectic. Then at the same time, we've been receiving emails and phone calls from tenants saying that we are stopping rents. We are not paying rent. The government uh, announced that um, they are rental uh, days, so we don't need to pay rent. And I am like, oh, no, gosh. <laughs> so it was absolutely hectic. Chaos. Um, just chaos. It's funny, you, you, you talked about, you're talking about sort of rental holidays, and because was there's a couple of points in there that I definitely wanted to sort of pick up and, and pick your brain in a bit more detail. So the number one there was the, the well, what I put sort of lump in the same category, the, the paying holidays, the mortgage payment holidays, the rental payment holidays. And I picked this out, I've written it down um, from one of the updates I got from the lender today, which stipulated two things. So you were able to get a mortgage holiday if you passed one of two things. So number one, if you're all your payments are up to date. And number two, if you can prove that you've been either directly or indirectly um, affected by the coronavirus. So that's kind of the mortgage side, so that would deal with our, well, and that's for buy to let and for residential, from what I can tell, um, is the information that's being passed on from lenders. So, from a re rental perspective, is that, have you heard of what kind of, whether there are any parameters that people would, uh, renters uh, would need to kind of adhere to in order to get rental holidays for themselves? Would it be something similar, do you think, or is it a little bit more involved than that? So basically, we actually yesterday at nine o'clock in the evening, I created a letter and we and we've been I forwarded to my uh, admin uh, person and he's been emailing everybody around. So we, we emailed all of our tenants, explaining the situation. It's not that the rental many tenants don't understand, and it's our role us as a lettings agents, and then also if we manage, and then landlords they sell managing properties. We need to explain to tenants so they understand. Rental holiday is not something that they will not be, that the, 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 it's written off. It's, it's deferred payment. It means that they will still need to pay later on. So sure. now, so it's not that, so it's not that they, yeah, they are not paying, they are free to, to, to stay in a property, mm -hmm. that's it. No, it doesn't work, that would put landlords into huge difficulties. So, so, it's not, so it's not how it works. They need to be in financial difficulties to be able to, 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 to seek um, um, a rental holiday. But they need to prove that they are in rental, um, in uh, financial difficulties. So they need to prove by providing a letter from managers, which 
at the moment obviously it's really difficult but by calling 111 we we i understand and i believe that this is possible they need to prove that they need to have a letter or pace lower pay slip from work prov uh, proving that they they are they are not at work anymore and uh, and they're not earning they need to uh, provide bank statements so they they do it's not that they just call us and saying we are self isolating that's it they actually need to prove that they are in financial difficulties and then what happens in our it's our role landlord's role to speak and negotiate with the tenant okay arrange the payment plan because they they've got option if they are in dif uh, financial difficulties government already promised that they will help and this is what we understand it's happening they can get in touch with um with universal credits and then get help get benefits so it's they will get help so they can pay the rent maybe it will not be a full rent maybe that rent will need to be in installment maybe there will need to be a payment plan in place it it's not a one of um explanation and uh, and at the moment, it's nothing 100%, but this is what we definitely know. This is the procedure that needs to be done. So nothing is written off. It's just deferred payments. So uh, we need to agree with them and negotiate and arrange the, 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 the plan. How I was going to ask you that, actually. So is the responsibility then down to the letting agent to make that judgment call or to make those arrangements? And if it is, does that then add an extra strain on, on you and your team because of the additional... As you can imagine enormous absolutely because there will be so much work to do because also um i've been, i've been discussing with one one of the other agents and, and and with my team because like it's easy to say but if you think about it to get all of this paperwork and proof it will take time that is already putting landlord into difficulty so the, yeah. the so for us communication and negotiation and then also keeping everything in track because we need to make sure that we do record this and then deregulation act and stuff we need to make sure that we record every single conversation so it's going to put a massive massive amount of of, of, of work on us on a on a on self-managing landlord and this is something that i wanted to say as well the, I don't think that there ever has been a time where property management was as important as now. Now it's really important that landlords manage the properties properly and they make sure that they follow the procedures, that they um, um, make a note of every single conversation, but also that they manage property properly, that all the paperwork is done properly. Because at the moment, what we've got, the the evictions been held for three months you cannot evict but if tenants and most likely this will be happening when tenants get into rent difficulties and they will not pay and landlord cannot evict them for three months and if they don't have a paperwork in place as they supposed to have they will not even be able to provide section 21 and they will not be even able to start eviction in a three months time because not many landlords realize that they cannot so that's, that's quite new. That's news to me. I wasn't aware of this. This change in the eviction laws and it, 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 to yeah, I mean, the, the, obviously it's so, to protect so, so, people, but um, it's something that people need to be made aware of because it, that's it. The, you know, the payment holidays and the insurance and, and some of the other stuff we we, we are and that we'll be discussing. It's that's headline news, but something like this seems to be sort of flying under the radar a little bit. But it's quite important, isn't it? It's very concerning for landlords, and then that's why I'm saying property management has never been as important as it's now. So they need to make sure that they've got all in place because now, like like uh, Boris Johnson said, for three months they can't do eviction. Tenants are protected from eviction for three months, but they if they are moving and they're not able to do it for three months, and then after three months they are still not able to do it because they don't have a paperwork in place because. I don't know, as, as, as small things, they didn't provide a gas safety certificate on time or together, or many landlords provide gas safety certificates together with tenancy agreement. That will not be really valid to provide the section 21 because that is such, um, because gas safety certificates supposed to be provided before. Or like some of them miss uh, how to rent guide that I'm talking about beginning of the tenancy. So now we are going back and then what was happening during the tenancy and the whole management if the tenants start, because now it's a 
moment, yesterday we had, we had um, um, and this is a real example, we had requests from, a, um, from, free, from one tenant who was talking on behalf of two other flats. So basically one landlord's got a property almost in front of our office. It's, um, and he's got three flats in one building about the shop and the tenant wrote to us that he spoke to the uh, other two flats and they have decided that they they will um that they are requesting for rental uh, um, uh holiday and i was like hello you can't just do that and you cannot do that on on the behalf of others uh, other uh, uh, properties as well because you just spoke to them so these landlords need to make sure because some of the tenants will be using the situation as well and this needs to be tackled very quickly government needs to look into it as well because it's yeah. it it just can't be done this way because the whole economy, if landlords going to go down, the tenants yeah. will, will go down too. The whole economy will go down. We will be, we are at the moment in a kind of okay. crisis, but we don't yeah. know what's happening. But if this will happen, we will be in a really, really bad position. It's funny, I was having a conversation with a client yesterday and we were talking about the kind of hierarchy of individuals that are likely to be look, looked after um, throughout this entire sort of crisis and landlords, you know, that landlords are vilified in general anyway, I think harshly. Um, I understand some of the reasons why. I think there's an element of jealousy, certainly. People, people have always hated landlords because of that sort of stereotypical thought of who a landlord is. But also, you know, they're generally very wealthy individuals and all that sort of stuff. So there's an element of jealousy, I think. But at the same time, there are some rogue landlords that spoil it for everyone else. But do you think that, you know, the worrying thing maybe in this current climate is that that reputation that landlords have is not really going to help everyone because they probably are going to be bottom of the food chain with regards to you know the government looking after certain you know, sections of society you know there's certainly probably going to be you know residential homeowners and, and renters are going to be held much much higher in terms of the levels of support than, than potentially landlords i don't know what your thoughts are on that yeah i think <sighs> This is a subject that I <laughs> I'm very passionate about, and I, I love know. properties and the business, you know. So it's like whenever I hear I, this is what I've been saying so many times as well. Like letting agents, landlords, and uh, uh, car dealers are the least trusted people because there've been quite a lot of bad landlords and bad reputation in the industry. But let's be fair and let's be honest. There is we are giving we are providing accommodation to people. And then, and now with the change in law, there is there is going to be such a um, um, like all these bad landlords are being cleared out of the market. Yes. And um, but um, I think the best now, which um, which is quite maybe not funny, but it's it's now uh, council tenants are the safest option because council is paying. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So for landlords as well, um, this is this is the safest option because like the, the, the council tenants are the are the yeah the safest and the, the, the rent will be paid and the landlords are safe. But um yeah it's 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 a difficult, it's difficult, it's really, really difficult situation at the moment. So what I can say, because I've been talking to landlords, they keep on calling me like crazy at the moment. What I can say at the moment, what we can do, we just need to do our best to help each other. Tenant needs to again, tenant need to understand that by not paying the rent just because they don't want to pay, they will put not only landlord into a difficult situation, but the whole country, the, they will put everybody into bad situations. So we need to, we need to, each of us need to evaluate the situation and be helpful to, and, and work together. This is the moment when we as a nation, the whole UK needs to work together. Tenants need to work with landlords. And I think on another hand, maybe there will be a shift in the industry as well, because we need to go together. And I don't think that there ever been, I'm, I'm, I have not been born in this country, as you know, but I've been living in this country for 15 years and I do love this country. And what I see, I think this might be a huge change and shift in the whole industry if we are going to if we are able to work together and, and get through this crisis, because landlords cannot judge tenants straight away that they don't pay rent because they don't want to. Some of them are really in difficult situation, especially mm -hmm. people who are entertainment, in pubs, in, in restaurants, they got no jobs. Yeah. And we need to understand. So, so there is all about the negotiation 
and then we need to be human and we need to keep on talking and understanding each other and just put plan like put um yeah pay uh, payment plans and then and in place and that's it just talking and communicating and trying to work together this yeah. is what i can say this is number one number two in where worse comes to worse landlords need to make sure that they are managing properties properly from the legal point of view because amount of, of legislation and compliance that we've got at the moment it's absolutely it went to the sky so we need to make sure that we comply that landlords comply because if worse comes to worse and eviction needs to take place they need to make sure that they can take that 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 eviction exactly. so you know actually what you've been saying it's something i've been talking about for quite some time obviously landlords have been hit quite heavily over the last few years anyway with these changes in taxation laws and stamp duty and all this kind of stuff and you know as much as i think that there were a few mistakes that were made by previous administrations you know george osborne in particular with when he kind of started this whole process with changes in certain taxation laws i think he kind of he maybe made a few errors um that we probably don't have time to go into all the details of which but i do think that the overriding reasons for a lot of these things were to try and professionalize the the the, the, the sector of the market the landlords and to get rid of as, as we've kind of already covered some of these sort of rogue landlords and you know i i've seen them i i see landlords every single day obviously in my my job and some of them are fantastic and some of them really aren't and there isn't actually that much in between they do tend to be quite polarized and the ones that aren't, you know, we're talking about, you mentioned about safety certificates and things like that. I, I've had clients over the last few years that don't even know what a fire safety certificate is or a gas safety certificate is. And they own five, six, seven properties. And they're the kinds of people, I suppose, that are trying to be pushed out of the market. And I suppose you could say... But I am so understanding, and you probably will confirm as a mortgage broker, I also I also understand that now to even take a buy to let mortgage or remortgage, more and more lenders, they actually ask for paperwork. Because I had one of the landlords in, in the office not long ago, and he was complaining that he the, the, the process of remortgaging properties is absolutely horrendous. And I was like, why? And he's like, because lenders are asking for all the all sort of paperwork. They want to, they want, they are like, there is a form to fill in if I provided how to rent guys how and he's like why do they need this this is nothing to do with them and I was like mm -mm, you are you are wrong why mortgage um, uh, lenders want to make sure that you've got paperwork in place is because if your tenants stop paying rent and you are not and you didn't provide paperwork as you're supposed to you will not be able to take them out of the property so your lender wants to make sure that your tenancy it's it's it's, it's set up correctly and you're, you're managing it correctly. because if you are if you're not receiving rent and you can't get the tenant out who is going to to get into into financial difficulty which is you and what will happen the bank will not get paid so so it's like it's what uh, one i need example. to i need to get you to talk to some of my my clients on the phone because obviously the, the way that i'm describing it to them is not as nice as the way that you, you just said it I, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm always been really passionate the about it and i can't and and sometimes when i see because I, I i have seen so many landlords who are actually good landlords but sometimes you just overlook stuff the, the the legislation recently have been changing massively even the like uh, uh, how to rent guide it's it, it changed on its own like three or four times and landlords need, landlords need to know to, to 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 make sure that they're providing the the latest one when they are providing a tenancy agreement to tenant and stuff if this is not a full-time job this these days property management it's either your full-time job or give it to the agent but also then you need to make sure that we are giving to a good agent because agent and agent is not the same the whole legislation for, to, for, for agents are coming in force now as well which is great but there is still quite a lot of agents who do not follow uh, the procedures putting landlords at risk so again it's all communication and then relationship relationship is the one of the most important because by this you know who is who and you need yeah. to just make sure that people that you work with are compliant do you know what so, you, you, because you raised such a good point and you mentioned it earlier and i made a mental note to come back to this because you mentioned about um the importance of property management 
And I've always been a massive, massive fan of this. And um, I, I went into the course a little while back, uh, a few years ago, um, on how to become an investor. And I did it actually so that I could see things from the other side to try and help my clients get into their shoes, you know, to be in their way of thinking and to provide a much more holistic service in terms of the advice that I gave. And one of the things you, you learn is the basics is just your figures. And they always included a 10% contingency within the figures for monthly cash flow for property management. And I actually switch this around when I speak to my clients all the time and say, this is how this is how I would be working out how much you're earning per month net cash flow after all of your you know, your outgoings and include property management in this. Because if you have plans, even if you're just buying one now or two, your plans are to have a whole portfolio one day. And do you really want to be managing 15 properties? Yes, you, you feel confident now that you could manage one, two, or three properties, but you sh should you be doing that? Because that's time that you could be going off buying other properties, expanding your portfolio, going to networking meetings, you know, having amazing Zoom calls with people such as yourself. You know, so the, their time could be so much better spent elsewhere. And I don't know what your, your thoughts are. I'm, I'm assuming that you're obviously, because it's part of what you do, you probably share my, my viewpoint on that. that Absolutely. Time management. Absolutely, absolutely. They can spend on something else, but it's this is only a part of it. But the most important at the moment is the whole legislation situation. So <laughs> I had I had a landlord recently, and he was saying that no, I, I am looking to get let only, and I will manage myself. My my wife, my wife, my wife is involved in it quite a lot. And I looked right. at him, and I was like, you don't love your wife, do you? <laughs> and he looked at me back, and he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you are putting her in such a risk. She can go to prison because it's not as as it used to be in the past that it was only. Um, and now it's a criminal offense, you know, like if you if you don't don't follow health and safety or if you if you don't don't uh, comply with um, with right to rent and then an immigration act, you can go to prison. Mm -hmm. Fines start from minimum to unlimited. Um, the regulation keep on changing as well. So it's like you and, and, and you are getting and you are liable. Whoever mm -hmm. it's. What the law states is like whoever is managing the property is acting as an agent. So it's acting as a managing agent. So then you need to comply. So it's like <laughs> it's 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 like whenever I hear that yeah that we want to do it um or like with my wife or my friend or my mom, I just when I hear my mom, I just don't let them go through it. I will talk them to until the moment that they will give me that management because wife husband, partner, lover. Why, why, would you, why would you put that stress and strain onto somebody that you love, exactly? <laughs> I think, but when I hear mom and I, and, I, and I see that elderly person going and taking that risk on them, I am like, no, no, no. Well, no, it's I, like I, I, I know that you're... Nobody was on them. So, yeah, no. And I know, I know obviously, you're, you're, you're so hot on the compliance side and the legislation side and all that kind of stuff, but even parking that for the time being and thinking of it from a logistical point of view, and you know, I'm a great believer in that every every job, every um, role um, is split into smaller chunks. And even if I look at myself as a mortgage broker, you know, I um, I need to do some marketing, you know, to find clients that want to work with me. I need to you know speak to them and and then actually advise them on which mortgage or which bridge or which development finance product is best for them. I need to um, uh, arrange that. I need to fill forms out. I then need to liaise with solicitors and valuers and all these other people, all the way through to the point where the money's in, in, in the, the client's bank. And a lot, of, a lot of mortgage advisors still go through that entire process. However, the thing that I'm best at is those first two points that I mentioned. So why not focus all of my time on that? And actually, I now have a team that look after the paperwork and the liaising with clients and solicitors and, and valuers and, and, and uh, underwriters throughout the back end of the process, you actually are so much better at doing that than I am. And that's the way that I see what landlords do. There's loads of different things that landlords do. They, 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 they um, research the market, you know, they, they look at stats, they look at areas, they look at, um, they could go on viewing, they um, liaise then with builders potentially to be doing work, they liaise with um, agents to try and rent those properties, they potentially have to look at um, all the compliance side of things as well. There's so many different jobs. Why add in the 
the management of the current portfolio into that when it's something that can so easily and actually in, in the grand scheme of things quite cost effectively be given to a team of absolute professionals who are available to do that job in some instances 24 7 depending on, on, on the makeup of the, of the team so it's just for me it just seems absolutely crazy um that, that being from an industry we've got a few people but you are very passionate themselves. about what you are doing and uh, and I think people can see that as well and I think this is where the the relationship comes and then the, this is the moment where a better service comes as well because this is what it is there is no one product there is no one solution there is no one situation it's all tailored to a person to each person to their circumstances to what they are looking for what they want because like with mortgage, like we've been sp speaking a few times, and then I really like what you what you've been talking, what you've been saying to some of the, uh, not to me directly, but I heard you talking. Sometimes it's worth it's it's worth to pay a little bit more to get more, or like it really depends of the situation, what you want the money for, what you would want the business for, what you want to do with it. So it's never like this is like with landlords, and then. And this is what happens with landlords, and this is what probably happens at first scene with you as well. People come, they want to get the cheapest mortgage for the, the lowest <laughs> rate and to get the most money. And then they realize, okay, yeah, but we, if we do this, and then you start to showing them the real picture. The same with me. They come and I'm like, but what do you want? Yeah. And sometimes they are asking, sometimes, this is how we build relationship, but this is what I like. Most of my landlords are either people who don't want to have anything to do with properties because they know I will do it for them, mm -hmm. or they are people who just we work together because they wanted to have fin financial freedom, but not really. It wasn't as much about like the financial freedom, but it was about time freedom. They wanted to have free time. And they are traveling now and they've got this property looked after the and properties are paying for their life while they are traveling so it's 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 tailored isn't it it's about i, I have those exact conversations with my clients um you know people think that when they get on the phone to me during our strategy calls as i call them to give them a sexy name um they want to um they think that i'm just going to be asking them a series of questions and then i'm going to tell them what rate they can get again and a lot of them are actually quite shocked that one of the first questions they ask is, what do you want to get out of this? You know, what's your end goal? You know, what, 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 where, where do you see yourself in five years' time? And it's amazing how many of those people start off by saying, and this, if, I could, if I could repeat calls back in my head and think, how many times has someone actually given me this exact answer? It's, I want to have, to have net 10 grand income per month. That, it's always 10 grand. It's always 10 grand. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> but then I, have to, and then I have to break them down and say, but why do you need 10 grand? Because most people don't know why they need 10 grand. And actually, you're absolutely right. It's actually financial freedom. And it comes up that it, you start cancelling people as well, because that is normally this is a moment that people are like, what do you mean? What do you, yeah. I don't, why are you I don't asking me this? Know. Yeah, you're a mortgage breaker. Why are you asking me this question? But it, but it helps me understand what their long-term goal is because my objective is really to help people on a long-term basis and actually when i drill down and i said why do you need 10 grand well well i want to i want to do this i want to start this company or i want, I want this particular car or i want to go on this many holidays a year I said, okay well read the first couple of chapters of tim ferris's four four hour work week and, and and figure out the cost of doing all of those things and then come back to me and tell me actually how much you need per, per month and we'll, we'll use we'll use that because then you've got a why attached to it You've got a physical thing in your head. Yeah. I want that Porsche, you know, and it's going to cost me four grand a month, but I want that Porsche. Okay, well, if you factor in your mortgage, your, your, holiday, your three holidays a year, that Porsche and the cost of your kids' school fees and your normal day to day living, okay, you're, we're up to 11 grand now. So actually, it isn't 10 grand, it's 11 grand. And it really, really centers people in. So I like what you said there because for me, it's about it's not just financial freedom, it's life freedom. You're actually you're doing this, and a lot of people do do this not because they just love property. There are certain people like Adam Lawrence and and the like. They obviously just love property and they love being involved in property. But but a lot of people get into this not for those. Reasons. Nah, even Adam, he loves life as well. He loves properties, obviously. Yeah, he loves, but he loves uh, he loves ties. He loves colourful ties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's going to watch this video definitely. So. <laughs> he better, he better do. He better do. I love the way he works, and that, but that's the thing. Everything we can't work for free, can we? 
but we need to but we cannot do stuff that we don't like because earlier or later there will be a burnout and then we will not be happy in doing what we are doing so i think this is where the passion comes and and the passion needs to be in whatever you are doing if you don't have a passion for it don't do it move and look for something different because without it's a people business property is a people business it's all about people completely so it, i agree how can you do, it, it's not something that you go i don't know what what doesn't involve people but, that, <laughs> <laughs> but actually but do you know I, I do i do have i do have a story on that actually i remember being at school and um, we used to do have a class called pse which i think is personal social education i think that's what it was which really doesn't mean anything let's be honest uh, but I always remember that we were talking about jobs and, and thinking about what kind of jobs you'd want to be in the future that would match your personality. And my teacher said that she once had um, a student who said, um, I, I don't want to work with people. I want to be able to listen to my, at the time it was probably mini disc or something back in those days, um, all day long. Um, and I just, and I just want to be able to do those, those two things. And I don't want to have to interact with anyone, and I don't, I, I don't want, want to do anything apart from, apart from that. I'm happy to just do tasks where I can listen to my music and not, not talk to anyone. And she asked the class, "Does, does anyone know what, what this person ended up doing?" And I put my hand up and I said, "Did he work in a morgue?" And she <laughs> went, "Yes, he did. He ended up working in a morgue." <laughs> so actually, there is a job out there where if you don't want to work with people, <laughs> you can go do that. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. It's but yeah, like in our well. industry, it all involves people, and he, and yeah. So, but it's not. But this industry, you know, and I know, and it it changed. So you just need to follow the protocol. Like we need to be human. We need to love what we are doing because this because it involves people. We need to know how to communicate with people. But also, we need to understand that this is a business, and this is not the type of business as it used to be in the past, where mm -hmm. you just copy a, a piece of paper which was a, a gas safety certificate mm -hmm. and then yeah. say, that's it. this is yeah. not and then uh, as they are like the the, the the latest counts were um it's about 327 pieces of, of legislation this is no time to risk so so from my point of view from a rental point of view definitely not from and then it's also it's got more regulated with with gas Gauge just getting into, into into property ladder as it used to be. So I think this is the reason why landlords and people are actually getting lost because in the past it was so easy and people were encouraged. It was normal that everybody will have a second house. Mm -hmm. Where now it's like all change and, and it's a bit yeah difficult for tenants for, for not for tenants for landlords and property investors. But yeah. here you go. You need to do it well and that's it. Um so for my clients, uh, for my landlords, just to make it clear, because you said it at the beginning, but just to summarize, uh, in terms, in your opinion, and then what you've been told, then in terms of uh, mortgage holiday, they, they, they have to request it. It's not that it will be done, yeah? Yeah, from, from my understanding. And look, I think the thing is, is at the moment, everything is changing. And this kind of brings me on to, I was about to say, you know, just to sort of, I suppose, begin to wrap things up. We can start maybe looking at predictions between us for the next few weeks, months, even the, the next year. But, but certainly, yeah, as a starting point, talking about those mortgage more holidays, changes that seem to be making being made every single day to, to what I'm being told. And I'm usually the emails that I get with updates from lenders that I get every two seconds. I kind of usually I put them into one folder and, and read them another time, but I'm actually reading them as they come through now to keep myself updated. But yeah, we, at the moment with mortgage holidays, I think it's an exist landlords and, and well, mortgage mortgages have to then go to their lender to, to request and they are going to be have to be in a good financial position i.e that they've been keeping up they've never missed any payments and they're updated all of their uh, their payments but also so it's something you need to do you need to do, you need do you to think that they will need to send the proof the, the, the mortgage, the, the lenders will ask to send the proof that they, they are not receiving rent or is just that that's a great they question. Request and um, and that's it. I'm assuming that they will be, and I'm I'm always a great believer, and this comes all the way back to you know when I when I'm looking at, at, at packaging together applications and things like that for lenders. I'm a great believer in um, 
covering every tiny little little angle and making sure that yeah. is completely watertight. And this goes for this as well. If you want to go to your lender and you believe that you're in a situation where you are going to need to have a, a payment holiday, and exactly the same as what you said, this doesn't mean that those payments are free. It just means that they're they're pushed back and probably your your term will go up by three months maybe. Um, but you know you want to make that application to them as watertight as possible. So I think you know one of the points is if you can prove that you are being affected. Now I would say so. It, so it says indirectly or directly. So I'd imagine that directly, obviously, means you, you have the coronavirus and have to take time off work. You have been sacked from your job. You are on reduced hours, or you are on subsidiary pay, or um, indirectly. Yeah. So the proof from the tenant would need yeah. to be done. So in, in indirectly might be that your husband or wife is now uh, not able to work, or your or your tenant is on a on a, um, a rent holiday. Or has been, you know, been granted a rent holiday by your letting agent, and I would imagine will will have to then provide proof of that. So, I think again, this is as we've been mentioning, it's about landlords working with yourself and and their letting agents to 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 cover all of these points off, so that when somebody does attempt to to get in touch with their um uh, their their lender, that actually they have everything prepared and ready. Yeah, and everything in place. They're, they're organised because. That just as you've said earlier on, that you're so so, you know, um, your your workload has probably increased three four times because of everything that's going on. Lenders are exactly the same. And guess what? Lenders are in exactly the same position as well. They've got people that are going to have to work from home but don't have remote access. So yeah. some of them, some of them are on skeleton staff. So I've had two that loan two lenders this week call me and say the applications that you just sent in, we're not going to be able to go ahead with it because we we don't have the capacity to to do the level of business. And because of amount of application they will have, they will be like either it's completed and and we are proving it or not. Yes, no. Yes, no. And then it can take for ages as well. So long as exactly. So sure. so I've also said before. So as I said, to kind of sort of start wrapping things up, if you were to think of maybe three things as predictions over the next couple of weeks that, that's going to happen in terms of the market as a whole, um, I know I've kind of put you on the spot there, um, but is what are the sort of the, 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 the two or three things maybe that you think are, are are likely to happen that people should be aware of over the next couple of weeks? In a rental market, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I don't think that any for the next two three weeks, it's a short short uh, space of time. So I think quite a lot will happen. So I think quite a lot of properties and, and tenancies will include rental arrears. I think um, um, quite a lot of properties, the landlords will be withdrawing, uh, letting those properties out, the ones that are empty. Uh, quite a lot of agents are, um, everybody, it's, um, it's uh, stopping viewings or limiting viewings. So property rental, there will be quite a lot of properties uh, on the market. So most likely rents will go down. I, th I do believe rents sure. will go down because landlords, uh, landlords will want to let them or some of them will decide, okay, they are not. So, so, so it's, it's very difficult to predict. It's, it's like kind of 50-50. Some of them will decide, I'm taking it off the market. I, I rather have it empty. Some of them will decide, I really need money because I put no money. I need to let it, so, so let's let it for, for less, but let's just get somebody in. I think quite a lot might go into into uh, um, cancel for cancel clients, uh, cancel tenants, because at the moment this is the safest option. In London, it's a different situation. Out of London, normally this, this it always worked, but for us in London, cancel uh, always paid less than the private tenants. But now it can change actually. Cancel tenants might be in demand because it's it's the safest option. So I think that, yeah, the, the, the rental and the stuff that you don't know about, but there's quite a lot of going on between, uh, 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 between um, advertising portals, right? Move Zupla uh, on the market. There is a huge fight at the moment and stuff because agents are very disappointed that there is no support. Um, so there will be quite a lot of properties uh, on the market, empty and waiting for tenants because they are either tenants don't because many tenants don't want to proceed as well. 
And then from other hand, there will be quite a lot because landlords will be withdrawing. So they will be waiting and sticking those properties, waiting there, but they will actually not be taking tenants on. And rents, in my opinion, definitely will go down. So quite a lot. The, the next few weeks is going, we just need to, I would ask absolutely everybody, let's work together. Because if we don't, if we start fighting against each other, and we, if we start to fight with each other, we, this, this, it's not going to be good. And we need to make, help this country because it's all about us. If we're not going to make it happen, it I, will, I agree. everybody will get, everybody will get affected. I agree. So I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on to on Team Matilda with that. I'm on Team Matilda. Save the country. <laughs> So in terms of in terms of like a, a final thought then, so given everything you just said, what opportunities for the next few weeks or months actually um everything with everything you just said, what kind of opportunities do you think that landlords actually have to you know, to maybe not take advantage, because that sounds like both a, a not a very nice way of putting it, but what opportunities do landlords have over the next couple of couple of months that maybe they wouldn't have had um in, in the normal market, do you think? Sorry to break that and tell that to say, say it, but I don't think that landlords got any opportunities. The only the only thing that landlords go, have at the moment is to bear with it and do their best to actually keep it safe. So I wouldn't say that they are opportunities, but what I would say is that what landlords need to immediately make a decision what they are going to do. If they are getting into a property and then they manage it properly or they or to get in touch with any local agent and give property to the agent because it's not this is this is i don't think they are opportunities but what they but they are risks so if they don't act now they might they might uh end up really really badly and massive massive um so, financial difficulties so to obviously to end then on, on in a positive note then so think there, there is an opportunity there's an opportunity for them to um be more uh, streamlined in the way that they work, and to be more organised, um, to get compliant, and to find a good uh, property uh, management company that can that can help them take the lead of the stress and strain of the next few months. So I suppose they could be seen as opportunities, couldn't they? So the, the, the good, the, so okay, okay. So the the, the good opportunities. I don't want to scare anybody. There is all. If they are, they need to be safe. So if they are with a good agent or if they are a good good landlord that they know what they are talking about, then they will be okay. But they need to make sure that they do communicate with tenants and get that rental. If you have not, dear landlords, if you have not get the rent guarantees yet, get on it now so you can have your peace of mind because this is what I would say. And that would be the one of the biggest opportunities and win if they do this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So look, Matilda, thanks so much for, for no spending your time with me this afternoon. It's been a joy as always. Um, but thank so, you. did you want to just tell everyone how they can get in touch with you, whether it's by social media or email or something like that, if they have any further questions for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you were, you can put a link. If not, you can always email me at mat, uh, matilda at kingsaccommodation.co.uk or just Google Brixton Property Blog. Uh, I, I I keep on, on, on giving articles and, and posting articles. I'm there. Matilda Novak London, if you Google me, you can find me anyway because I'm quite mm -hmm. a lot. I'm talking about legislation quite a lot. So, so, in, so in, in very comments. easy to find. Very Absolutely. easy to find. We'll make sure that your um, everything's in the comments and in the show notes on the podcast as well. So, uh, so Matilda, thank you so much and um, good luck over the next few Thank weeks. you, Sam, and good, good luck. Thank you. We all need luck now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, thank Matilda. you.